of golf vary in each of these magnificent clubhouses but in general it is understood that each player must furnish his or her own equipment this should include at a minimum one hole a club and balls on the public course in town the object of the game is to use the club to get the ball into the hole but on these courses it is to get the equipment into the hole and keep the balls out from that point on the rules of the game seem to vary wildly from course to course However, it is generally considered bad form to begin playing the first hole immediately upon arrival. And players are cautioned not to mention other courses they are playing or have played, as upset course owners have been known to fly into a rage and damage a player's equipment, sometimes so badly that it has to be buried somewhere off the premises. Death among the players is not uncommon. Will you guys be through with this? Give us 20 minutes. Some people had no appreciation for beauty. I checked with the neighbors. Apparently, she and her old man were getting a divorce. She was married to uh, Gator Ramsey. The volleyball player, I know. Used to see him stopping traffic down on the beach. It's hard to tell which one was turning more heads. <clears throat> According to the neighbor, it was getting pretty loud. Gator moved out two days ago. I phoned all that in, and Hutch put out an APB on him. They were going to get a divorce. He caught her down here. They argued. He lost it. He killed her. Yeah. That'd do it all right. Open and shut case if he has me. Are you through with this? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. You get any more headaches? I want to know about it. Immediately. Right. Immediately. Anything for the doc. Now go pass some of that genius around. Yeah. Hello? It's me. We've got a silk stocking, Deidre Snow, the model. Somebody worked over pretty good. That would be a law. There is. Grab your helmet. Sam, you're in the game. Gator Ramsey, we got an all points out on him. Just talk to Vani in communications. She's going to call us as soon as one of our units spots the car, so be ready. Right. You OK? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Dr. Green, she's still there? His name is Mark Dennison. He can't handle this. He's, he's starting to shake apart. He diagnosed it. He knows the risk. Every time he wants you, he feels guilty, but he's in love with you, so he can't stop. You're gonna destroy him, Sammy. Yeah, I know, and there's a moral to the story. Yeah? What's that? Never play doctor with doctors. How did it go with Reno? Did you keep your courage and break up with her? You were right, I gave her my car. I figured. We'll use mine. Bye. saying is 
you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, which is a useful piece of knowledge if you're a fly rancher. Of course, most of the fly ranchers in this town use pimps and wear tight dresses, but I've found nothing gets a man's libido exercise more than his own ego. One L60. I've got a make on that blue Jag convertible. California plate 2SUT584. Parking lot of Barefoot Bar and Grill off Ocean Drive. Roger that. Stand by 1L60. Chris, the car's in the parking lot of Barefoot Bar and Grill on Ocean. Thanks, Vonnie. Hello? Okay, you're up. Barefoot Bar and Grill off Ocean. All right, I'm on my way. Is that gate around this car? Yeah, I'm waiting for backup. Not a busy day, could be a long wait. Could be. So I was waiting. Yeah. Not a night shift. Did they say this gate? Go tell me you ain't Gator Ramsey, because I seen you play at the Gulf Coast Nationals. Man, that match between you and Sinjin Smith, where you won the first two, went 15 to 9, and the last one went 14 all. Side out, side out, side out. Man, oh man, oh shevis. You are one go to hell volleyball machine. You saw that match. <laughs> I have seen you play half a dozen times, Mr. Ramsey. You, could I have your autograph? Well, yeah, sure. Here we go. Whereabouts in Texas you from? Oh, San Antonio. Same as you, sugar. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I don't think we should go in there until Captain Hutchinson gets here. He wants to be in on this one. We got an old points on this guy. It's a pickup, Sarge. Look, we got the car scope, right? Let's just do the captain a favor and sit on this one. Just got to get her to give me a second chance. You know what I'm saying, Rita? Jeez Louise, honey. How can any woman throw out a sweet boy like you? <laughs> it's very complicated. It's... Things change, you know. It... She's getting more and more modeling work, and I'm not winning tournaments like I used to. What do you think I should do? Gee, sugar. I think you should remain silent. Huh? You see, you got the right to remain silent. Of course, if you give up that right, I suppose anything you say can be held against you in a court of law. <laughs> yeah, you're right. So what? So what? Well, see, you end up in court. You got the right to an attorney. Y'all know that, right? And if you can't afford one, well, then they gonna provide one for you. I suppose you're right. Well, of course I am. Now, you do understand your rights, don't you, sugar? Yeah, of course I do. They ain't gonna make her take me back. Mm, well, I suppose not. You know, maybe I ought to go on home. I'm not much comfort, I'm afraid. You are very pretty. I still want to make my marriage work. Hey, there he is. Better not wait for the cab. Let's go. Gator Ramsey. Yeah. You're under arrest. Suspicion of murdering Dangerous Snow. What? Oh, come on. Murder? Oh, no. No, she can't stand I'm here. He's clean. 
Not bad looking either. Palm Beach PD it could also be called tournament headquarters. This is where the bad golfers get disqualified. Chris calls society murders silk stockings. I call them bunker shots. Either way, in this town, they keep us pretty busy. Lance, I got the ADA in here all over my teachings. Get in here. Now. Who do you know, Susan? She was catching last night and caught the Ramsey 187. We know each other. Rita and I have a distinctly different view of law enforcement. Sounds like indigestion. I hope your breakfast is agreeing with you this morning, Sue. Where the hell is your partner? Chris went to the opening. The what? The autopsy. I'm trying to decide whether to even file on Gator Ramsey. I have 48 hours on a discretionary hold, but there are some irregularities. Apparently, Sergeant Lorenzo headed off the arresting officer so that Sergeant Lance could contact the suspect in advance, perhaps violating his rights. Ergo, I'm concerned. I know from past experiences, Ms. Lance gives no meaning to the words pumping a suspect for information. Jealous or complaining, Sue? I guess I'm complaining. Did you even bother to read him his rights? It's the first thing I did. Did he know he was having them read to him? You still have to prove that Gator Ramsey killed his wife. Now, my hunch is he didn't do it. Is that a legal hunch or a sexual one? Captain, could you get this dry biscuit out of here? I can't stand righteous indignation before my coffee. Susan, how does 8 o'clock sound? Your tops ought to be complete by then, and you can make your decision if you want to file it or not, OK? I got to hand you one thing, Rita. God made you look good. It's too bad he forgot to give you any brains. And it's too bad he put you south of your pipic, Sue. South of your pipic. I tell you what, why don't you just take a chainsaw, go down to the DA's office, and just do this thing upright? Think I went over the top there, Skipper? Yeah, you might say that. Ergo, I'll send her a box of condoms and a nice note. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? Sometimes. Yeah, I bet you do. How am I supposed to work in a place like this? I mean, I'm supposed to be a cop. This is supposed to be a precinct, not something out of a, out of a science fiction movie. Do you, know they, do you know they spent millions of dollars to remodel this place? And the joke is, I can't get a dime for a new officer or new equipment. But they'd rather spend the taxpayers' hard-earned dollars on something like, uh, like this. Well, everybody loves it. I mean, I think it's kind of hip. Excuse me, Rita, but do I appear to be unhip? I know hip, Rita. Miles Davis was hip. Anita Baker? Hip. This is a nightmare. Are you finishing here? Absolutely. Now, what did you say to the lovely Miss Harner? She went by me on her broomstick, moaning and groaning. Well, it was sweet and sort of touching. She told me I was beautiful but dumb. I told her her brains are poorly located. Ah, well, an answer for every occasion. That's what makes us such great detectives. So, how was the opening? Uh, it was sad but confident. Mm -hmm. A massive abdural hematoma and hemorrhaging in the left lobe causing immediate pulmonary respiratory failure, uh, resulting in instant death. And no trace evidence under the nails, no hair or skin in or on the immediate vicinity. A vacuum evidence turned out to be sweat, dust, and carpet lint. But she'd had intercourse. Semen sample shows an AB blood secretor. Okay, I'm waiting. What type is Gator Ramsey? I ran a test on him this morning. He's an AB secretor. But yeah, he claims that he hasn't had sex with her in two weeks. If Gator is an AB secretor, you can bet that Susan Hahn is going to indict him. That's all the physical evidence that she needs. I'm telling you, I don't think he did it. AB is a common blood type. It could be a million guys in this town. I want to keep looking. OK. You know, I put you two on this detail because I think you're the best I've ever had in crimes of passion. You run your engines a little too fast, but I like that. Are we being complimented? I don't think so. I'm getting a little tired of hosing down a DA office for you two, making excuses at IA. 
Now this thing's gonna be a news blizzard and I can't hold back the press. Now get out of here and bring me a hump. Sam, you gotta stop standing on the grunts in the DA's office. Eventually, they're gonna get IA to sink you. Yeah, I know. It's just the bitch blew in dress like an ad for genetic research and started hawking me about the way I do my job. By the way, where are our brains located? Yes. <laughs> Sure, we're a golden couple. Yeah, they sure were. All right, let's get started. I got divvies on the bedroom. You're a nosy slut, Sam. But at least I'm immune to flattery. What's that? Bug. Looks like it's been here for a while. Battery's dead. Nice little unit. German expensive voice activator, I think. Painted over with poster paint to match the lamp. Pro job. What do you got? Who's on the Willie Abbott rape case? Uh, Liggett and Singer, I think, but it's in court now. We're about to go. Well, maybe she knew him. Old friends. Deidre Snow is a world-class beauty. It's a world-class fortune this guy is attached to. I'm invoking club rule, Sam. Um. Okay. You take mine, I'll take yours. Uh, there's a guy down on Mission Street. Deals in German electronics. Reniger, Reniger, something like that. You might want to start there. And you could start with Roxy the Doxy. Roxanne Dockweiler's not going to talk to me. I busted her on drugs last year. Almost got her kicked out of the social registry. Hey, weren't you the one that told me no woman could resist your charms? Shallow bow, Sam. Yeah, well, she can duke you in with the abbots. I saw the way that she looked at you when you weren't watching. Trust me here, I know the breed. Yeah, I'm fine. Headache? Look, people get headaches, Chris. It doesn't mean anything. Why don't you get that saw bones that you're dating? Go in there and cauterize it or whatever they do. He says where it is, it can either paralyze or kill me. I would rather take my chances with it this way. Look, don't go all dopey on me. I'm okay as long as everyone doesn't treat me like damaged merchandise. Look, it's an aneurysm, a little swelling of a blood vessel. And it can't be fixed without great risk. Chances are nothing will ever happen, OK? OK. And if I tell Hutch about it, he's going to put me up on a medical, have me sweeping in the file room. I would rather go down in a blaze of inefficiency with you. Just that you're my best friend, Sam. You know. As long as you're working with me, you're not even going to come close. I wasn't making a play. Oh. 
But as soon as they separate us, I will race you to the nearest motel. I couldn't take that chance, Sam. I'm so good in bed, I'd explode that balloon in your head in the first 30 minutes. I just wouldn't want that on my conscience. Well, we'll just have to wait and see, huh? Sergeant Lorenzo of the Sea Rock Sand Dockweiler. Thank you, Frederick. You know, when I get my portrait done, I usually wear a blue pinstripe. I think I've been missing something. Oh, well, that will be fine for a moment. Why don't you take five? Why, well, Sergeant Lorenzo, can I offer you something? Maybe some Coke? The soft drink, I mean. I certainly learned my lesson. I'm gonna need something if you keep laying there like that. Oh, this is for my new boyfriend, Alex. It's for his birthday. This is the tamest of the three shots. The nudes come next. You need a steady your hand on the flash? Didn't we play this scene in one of those little green rooms you have down in your office? As I recall, you weren't interested then. Yeah, I was on duty then. I try not to bed suspects. It's my one concession to professional ethics. I was doing my best. You just wouldn't come across. I seem to feel now that the moment may have passed. Yeah. Especially with Alex on the scene. You know, what pool is he working at? I'd like to swing by and congratulate him. You may know him. He races yachts. No, I just race taxi cabs, buses. Occasional freight trains. See how much fun we can have when you aren't arresting me? Though I have to admit I did enjoy that little diversion with the handcuffs. Well, that's what they give them to us for. And what are you after this afternoon, Sergeant? I sense in you a mischievous spirit. Really? And I thought I had it covered so nicely. You like to shock that crowd you run with. I bet that this portrait will end up on your Christmas card. What a splashy idea. I need to get into the Abbott compound or close to the Abbott clan. I know you're running that school, so I thought maybe you'd like to see me do my trapeze act way up there. No nets, lots of clowns laughing. Hmm. You have to judge Spencer Abbott, his ne'er-do-well middle-aged dropout son, William. Or little Willie the rapist. I am not after people, Roxanne. I am after justice. That's what makes me such a special civil servant. How could I have missed that? Well, it would be sort of scandalous if I were to take you to the Abbott's Wednesday night pool party. The cop who busted me. Mm -hmm. I would get the ducks quacking. Sounds interesting. I usually go stag. But in your case, I think I'll make an exception. Pick me up at eight. I'll bring the prophylactics. You bring the handcuffs. One question. Go ahead. What the hell are we going to do with Alex? <laughs> Butch Lonigan was an ex-cop who quit the force because of a disability. Chris was right. Reiniger down on Mission Street had made the bug for Butch. My guess is that Butch had planted it. Keep your chin up. Four. One, two. Nice turn there. Very nice. The office said you were here. What the hell is this, Sam? It's my farm team. 
time. Yeah, 10, 12 years, these girls will be stopping traffic. Got to look ahead towards retirement. Yeah, sure. Now, which one is Rosita? One right there in the blue. Perfect fifth position. That's a position that looks like somebody broke her legs. You just don't get ballet, Sam. She has mucho talent. I, I predict that she will be dancing for the crown heads in Europe. Or, at the very least, the bald heads in Tulsa. Uh, you broke up with Reno, but you're still driving her daughter to ballet lessons. Sometimes I do not understand you. Very nice, very nice. I like this little girl, Sam. She's smart. She's funny, too. She's got very little of material value, but she's rich inside what counts. So I want to ride the parade. Except you gave your car away. Minor setback. Did you find out who got that bug? Yeah, it was Butch Lonigan. Ooh, ex-cop. The ex-everything. He's on the ark. Suicide. At least he left a note. I have nothing to live for. Then he wanted to give his car away to the girl next door. Watch out. It could be an early warning syndrome. <clears throat> could it be murder? Well, I got forensics on it right now. They're going through the place. It was pretty gamey in there. Steve Snow is dead. We find a bug in her apartment. The guy who owns the bug is dead. It's a big coincidence. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying it. Somebody's stealing off loose ends. Me neither. How'd you do with Roxy the Doxy? Set up. Going to a pool party at the Abbots. You're not invited, but I thought I'd bring you anyway. Hmm. I've always done well at pool parties. But what's Roxanne gonna say? She will probably say, Did you bring enough Vaseline, dear? What a golfer. <laughs> Let's take my rolls. I hate it when I'm at a fancy party with axle grease on my dress. You wouldn't want to get any old cheese pizza on that nice butt you got there. Nice ride, Roxy. Where'd you get it? Alex gave it to me. See, Sam, I'm not the only one. Chris gives his cars away to girls when he breaks up. Hmm, what a splashy idea. Thank you, Roxanne. Sam is just angry because she has to drive me around every time I do it. Sam, Sam, why Sam? Slamming Sammy, Sammy Snee, Snee, the greatest golfer that ever lived. I never played golf, but I have played the club pro. Close enough. Sort of like spin the bottle with chlorine. Oh, nice, darling. Where's Willie Abbott? Oh, Willie doesn't play the key game. He sort of prowls along the edges of the herd and picks off strays. Translate that drunk townies. Some of his friends round them up from burger joints and bowling alleys. Sort of cannon fodder for the boys. There he is, Willie Abbott. Who's the snake dancer with him? Arthur Whitman. They call him Whipped. He's sort of half security expert for the Abbots, half friend. He used to do dark, dangerous things for the CIA. I tried him on once. He's the original 30-second mistake. All right, you're up, Sam. Now I'll steer Porky out of the way. Don't get where I can't see you and remember. I'll bet you're fine. Have a ball, dear. Hey, how you doing? Shove off. I don't need a new buddy. Hey, I don't want to pick out silver. I'm just trying to be friendly. Everyone here needs to get their tubes tied. That includes you. How you doing? Okay. <laughs> you from town? The Wayne or Stu invite you? Well, actually, see, I was at this burger in and out. And this guy came up to me and he said, do I want to come to this great party at this fabulous estate? <laughs> so here I am. Hey, why don't you come on down to the beach with me, huh? I need to get some smokes off my boat. Ooh, no kidding. You got a boat? 
It's a family yard. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> very hot. Let's go. All right. <laughs> This is your boat? Sure enough, fishing boat. Come on. Hey, I'm gonna show you how I catch tuna. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, slow down. Give me a chance to get my dancing hey, shoes on. I said, come here. You know you want it, baby. Okay, put it down. You can't be so horny you're going to kill me because I said no. I said put it down. You want to get with that, Willie? Huh? You better take your best shot, because I'm not going to go easy. Ah! All right, we're going to play some games. You like to play games, bitch? Yeah. You ever play mechanic, huh? The object of this game is for me to blow off your oil pan without hitting your dipstick. Yeah, it's real hard. I've only made it once. Don't do this, please. Hey, I, I didn't mean it. Now that you've seen how dangerous it is, maybe you won't play with girls who don't want to play. Please. Please don't do this. Please. Did you know her? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Know who? Willie Abbott was a hacker and I was a hazard on his course. He got hurt. He put to sea on his yacht the real fantasy to rest for a few days. The difference between championship golf and country club golf is the size of your equipment. I checked out Willie Abbott's equipment and he was playing miniature golf. Go ahead, get it off your chest. I can't stand it when you freelance like you did last night. I can't back you up if I don't know where you are. The day I can't handle a tweed bag like Willie Abbott's, the day you can get me enrolled in a knitting class. I'm sorry, okay? You're not gonna do it again? No. But speaking of tweed bags, you let me handle Susan Hunter. The way you play it, we're gonna end up with our warrant stuffed down our throats. Well, I could wait in the car and yell instructions. No, you don't have to wait in the car. Just don't throw kerosene in matches. I've been waiting here for about 20 minutes. Are you Susie? Susie? Miss Horner, I can't tell you how happy I was to find out that you were the prosecutor on this case. And it was really great of you to get us a warrant to search Butch Lonigan's office. But, you know, this could take a while. I don't know that you want to dig through trash cans with us all morning. I'm here to protect the integrity of the case. I have zero confidence in the way you two are handling the investigation. Look, Susan, there's no need to keep up this animosity. I apologize. I am sorry for what I said to you in Catherine Hutchinson's office. I don't think that your brains are between your pipic and your back door. That was a very nice apology, Sam. Very nice, very adult. Now, do you have anything that you would like to say to Rita, Susan? So where are my brains? Beats me, but don't flush your toilet. Way to go, mildly amusing, totally unproductive. The bitch makes me mad. She was just joking, she has a real sense of humor. It takes a little getting used to. room file area. No, the warrant's supposed to be for this office. Sergeant Lance made out the paperwork. It said she wanted to check the files. 
That's what the warrant says. I just got the judge to sign it. The intent of the warrant was to search his office. The warrant is for one room, the file room. That's here. No, Chris, listen, just forget it. Let's just check the files and see what we can find. Just how do you think Butch Lonig and Deidre Snow are tied together? Through Willie Abbott, Jr. Through Willie Abbott, Jr. I see. And what connects Willie Abbott to Deidre Snow? So? The boat she's on, the real fantasy. See, it belongs to the Abbots. And how do you know that? I was on it last night. Little Willie tried to rape me. I beg your pardon? He tried to rape her, just like he raped that waitress he's on trial for. We think he might have also raped Dieter Snow. If he tried to rape you, Sergeant Lance, why the hell didn't you arrest him? Because we were working on murder and we didn't want to blow our cover. Right, sir? Not really. See, I had my hand in his pants and I couldn't get my badge out of my purse. Perfect. And what makes you think I had anything to do with this dead private detective? Billing invoice in his file. You still owed him $2,000 on services rendered. Maybe we asked Mr. Lonigan to do some work for us. I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it. You're the Abbott's attorney, and we think the Deidre Snow murder is tied to Willie Abbott. That, of course, is absolute fiction. In what way could young Mr. Abbott have anything to do with that girl's murder? Deidre posed for a photo shoot on the Abbott estate and then on their boat three months ago. A week later, $50,000 was put in her bank account. We just came from her bank. I really have a very full afternoon. I think Willie Abbott jumps anything that moves. I also think that he raped Deidre Snow. He gave her the 50 to keep her quiet. I think she opted not to say anything because her marriage was in trouble. She didn't want to add to the problems that she and Gator were already having. But once that marriage was over, she called up Willie and said, I'm going to testify against you in the current trial. I'm going to be a witness to the waitress who's accusing you of rape. Now, that would finish his chances in court. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave my office. Let me warn you, Mr. Westerlin. If you hired Lonigan to plant this illegal bug and it led to her death because you or somebody else heard her planning to testify, then you are tied to this murder, and you will most likely be prosecuted for accessory after the fact. I don't have to talk to you. I blew it. I didn't platform a right. I shot at him too fast. You know, he's going to think it over and he's going to realize I was bluffing. He's a lawyer. We got nothing. <laughs> hey, what the hell did you say something in there? Ball on the fumble. You sat there like moss there on a tree. There was a bug on his lamp exactly like the one in Deidre's bedroom. See, he paid Lonigan to plant a bug at Deidre's place. But somebody got Lonigan to plant a bug on him. What agency back homes its own people, lives in paranoid anxiety, and dresses off the racket Sears? CIA. Oh, Whit Whitman used to work there. Maybe. Could be. Look, I'm right about this. And if Whit Whitman gets a little bit froggy, you might think that lawyer could turn him in. We might be able to get a pig bile going here. I'll bring the PB&J. You bring the donuts. Roxanne was only interested in my handcuffs. Hey, look, we're just going to put Roxanne in the Hall of Fame and move on, okay? Okay. Bonnie gave away your Corvette. Yeah? How do you know? Saw it on Lincoln Street. A guy was driving it. Probably another vet looked like mine. No, it was yours. A big primer patch on the left rear quarter panel. Well, maybe she loaned it to the guy. It's her car, Sam. I was behind it, so I ran it. New owners. A guy named Danny Quintana. Danny Quintana. We had to do something about your reflex, about giving your cars away. Maybe she needed the money. She's driving a new Alfa Romeo. I checked it out. Danny Quintana's her cousin. She gave it to him. You trying to tell me something, Sam? When I met you four years ago, you were driving a Jag. I said to myself, who is this sharp piece of business driving an English sled looking like $8 million? Now, four girlfriends later, I'm saying, who is this skunk in Hush Puppies walking to work? Well, it's not that far. It's downhill. You know, I'm thinking about stealing a market basket and coasting in. You know, for the world's biggest stick man, you're about the biggest gomer on the planet. It's kind of sweet. Yeah, I'm sneaking up on your blind side, Sam. Oh, you wouldn't do that to me. Because you're my best friend, too, Sam. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what a revolting development. Showtime.
We're never gonna get a clean shot from here. Yeah, I hate this bulky hardware. You move in and get him from the back. I'm gonna go around front and dance him around a little bit, okay? I didn't like the way you sounded, Carl. How should I sound? Please coming in asking me questions. Think I had something to do with Deidre Snow's death. You did. I had nothing to do with killing her. You said we needed to see what she was up to, so I got you Lonigan. You killed Lonigan and her, didn't you? I'm gonna call Judge Abbott tomorrow. Get a loop on Carl. You're not calling anyone. I didn't kill Deidre. Willie did. He's a violent kid. I just ran the damage control operation. I put out some misinformation, sealed off a leak. And the leak was Lonigan. My job is to take care of the Abbots. So don't think Judge Abbott will have sympathy for turning over his grandson to the local bulls. Wait, you're crazy. You, you, you're not going to get away with this. Let's go. No, come on. Wait, I've, I've got a wife and two kids. Let's go. Look, uh, my secretary Let's go. Knows. Somebody's gonna find out. Damn, it's gonna find out. Wit. Get the cuffs on him before he comes to. Roxanne's got my cuffs. I know, I know. I got caught up in the moment. Just use yours. Do you remember this courteous, life-saving service when your client gets a text time next year? Come on, Sam. Let's get him back to the barn. Socialite grandson of appellate court judge Spencer Abbott is under arrest today, charged with the murder of swimsuit model Deidre Snow. This is the latest in a series of legal difficulties for Willie Abbott, who is currently awaiting trial on a separate rape charge. We will, of course, follow the story for you and bring you details as they become available. Now this. Stick around to watch. I'll buy you some lunch. I'm having lunch with Gator. He wants to say thanks. He's saying it with lunches off. Eat some for me. It's a promise. Hey, beautiful. I love it down here. I'm in room 615 at the hill. Call me gorgeous. That's the way it is down here. Too much money, too much mayhem, too much messing around. So we soldier on. Chris is my best friend, but even he doesn't completely understand. My philosophy is you aren't sick unless you admit you are. I have this blood bubble in my head, and I guess there are some who would say I'm living my life fast so I won't miss anything if one day soon it goes pop. Maybe there's a fraction of truth there, but bromides are too easy. One size doesn't fit all unless you're playing golf. Sometimes the stories in the clubhouse are hard to understand, and sometimes late at night I get to where I think I may give up golf for a while. But then in the morning, I usually feel different. <laughs> 